There are a ton of items in Minecraft. I remember the days when the inventory system looked a lot simpler than this. It was basically wood, a little bit of stone stuff, some cobblestone and things, and then wool, and that, that was basically it. Now we have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of various different things that are available to us. So, I thought it'd be fun to try and build a redstone contraption that makes use of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go. Honestly, as I look through that inventory system there, uh, I started to get more and more fearful. Anyway, the type of redstone contraption that we're going to be building is known as a Rube Goldberg machine. Now, these exist in real life. They're essentially a chain of events that leads to a specific outcome, and we're going to run through just a whole bunch of different things. The first item that I want to concentrate on is stone, and I thought the best way to do that was to make use of a stone generator. So we're going to be generating stone that's going to activate the next part of the circuit, but also the stone generator makes use of a bunch of different items too, like lava, water, pistons, there's going to be redstone involved. And I also, looking at this, decided that actually I shouldn't just build it out of glass, I should throw some other blocks into the mix, and I gotta say, I think this build may end up being very, very ugly. Like, incredibly ugly. It's almost laughable how awful this thing looks. Anyway, we've got, we've got stone being generated now, and that should reach this end point fairly soon. Yep, there we go. So that's as far as it reaches, so I guess we should chuck an observer in here. And then I think I also want to try and explode the stone, because then we get cobblestone, and we can use that as an item in our system. But I think the way that we get the TNT to activate should be slightly different to how we would normally get TNT to activate, so I've built up this sand launcher right here. Which I imagine will go through a tripwire and power some TNT. This redstone contraption is already ridiculously stupid. And we're on like the first few builds. Let's see what happens here then. Stone is being generated. Signal has been sent. Sand has been dropped. TNT has been powered. Is it going to blow up? Yes it is. And it also blew up the trip wires and the string. <laughs> That's not the end of the world though, because this is kind of a single use system. We now have a piece of cobblestone which can go into a water stream. Now, I have made a few modifications to this system, so hopefully this TNT no longer blows up this trip wire, but I've also added in the water streams and things that are going to take our cobblestone across like this, then up like this, and then into the next part of the design. So the next item that I want to make use of is sponge. So obviously we have dry sponge and then we also have wet sponge. So we're going to push this dry sponge across. It's then going to clear that water. It's going to convert it into wet sponge. So that means that we've made use of both of those items. This water is then going to gradually trickle down and I guess we can detect that making use of an observer, which can then lead us onto the next part of the circuitry. If you can't tell, I absolutely love building Rube Goldberg machines. They're so much fun, especially when they actually work, which this one now does up to this point right here. So let's take a look in here. So we've got sponge. Okay, is there anything creative we can really do with lapis? Not particularly that I can think of. We've got all the different slabs and things. What other blocks can we kind of interact with? Well, now we're not directly interacting with the wool, but I like the idea of having a piston feed tape that actually cycles these wool blocks around. And then you can see we have a block of glass in there too. So if I just power this thing, you can see that the wool cycles around, gradually makes its way around, and then eventually this glass block will go in front of this repeater right here. It will unpower briefly and push that redstone block across and that will activate the next part of the circuit. And I actually got a little bit carried away and started building the next part of the circuit because I suddenly remembered this feature and I didn't want to forget it. And that is the fact that you can send redstone signals through leaves by pushing a wood block into them. Look, check it out. That observer has just powered, so that means that we can chain all of these together and basically create like a snaking redstone circuit of all the different leaf blocks. Let's see if this actually functions. So here goes. Powering. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> that is so strange, but so cool. Okay, what comes next? What could be our next stage? I needed to make use of red sand and also gravel. So we've got a little setup right here. I'm also making use of cobwebs and slime blocks for the first time. So we're covering a couple of bases in that area now. And this thing is gradually starting to get bigger, which is cool. It makes total sense that I would just make use of the slabs to get a vertical redstone system. But now I need to think of a cool way to bring the redstone downwards. I mean, we could have things go up and down because there's a bunch more slabs and stairs that I need to use. 
Maybe an anvil? Or potentially make use of an item dropped out of a dropper going through trapdoors. So this, this is the system that I've created. If I power this, our gravel gets pushed across, everything gets powered, and the item gradually makes its way through there, and then that can land on a pressure plate. We can send the signal back up and basically loop things around a little bit here. I've jumped ahead a little bit because I'm having too much fun. Once again, I've, I've used up all the stairs. We've built up an anvil dropper that then runs through this tripwire hook here, and that sends a signal into the next circuit, which is the melon and pumpkin crusher. So if I just grab myself a jack-o'-lantern, I'm assuming jack-o'-lanterns also get crushed by pistons, but we should see if I just chuck something like this at the end what we need to do is we need to invert this redstone torch so you see that redstone torch is currently off when the anvil travels through the tripwire hook all of those will get crushed and now our redstone torch is on so we have sent the signal on to the next part of the circuitry and i've just given the full system its first test in ages and amazingly it all seems to be working everything is all fully connected which i gotta say is a huge surprise because i totally did not expect all of this to be working together anyway next up we have got the ice segment Oh, it needs to be a wooden pressure plate, doesn't it? That's like original Minecrafter redstone information. I can't believe I forgot that. Right, the next set of blocks in the menu is the concrete ones. And I feel like because these are one of the few blocks in Minecraft that we can actually convert, it would be wrong of me not to do that. So this system here will put out water. It will convert all of these from being concrete powder into concrete. So that means that we've knocked both of those off the list. But also, these observers are going to detect that. We then have this massive AND gate down at the bottom here. So this redstone torch will turn on once all of these are converted. Now let's just quickly check that that actually works. So water comes out. And that might just be one of the more satisfying circuits inside this gigantic redstone contraption here. Now actually, continuing down the list, one of the other blocks that can convert in Minecraft are the coral blocks, because if they're outside of water, I think they die. So maybe we could remove the water from around corals and then have them die and detect that a little bit like what we've done here. Honestly, I have no clue. I've never really... I don't even think I've placed a coral block before, so let's see what happens. Coral goes down. We wait. Okay, well that's... That's definitely promising. If it's surrounded by water, is it okay? Yeah, it seems to be living. And it's died. Okay, um, that means that in theory we might actually have a redstone contraption here. It seems like it should function, so I've got a dispenser back here with an empty bucket in it. It will pick up the water, all of these corals will die, retracting all of these redstone blocks, which will activate our redstone torch and then send a redstone signal up through here. So what I'm doing now is I'm making use of all the different colors of glass because I feel like that's important to do and this is a good use for it. And then I think that actually takes us to the end of the building block section. I have used all of these blocks inside this build so far. Oh, apart from soul sand and magma, those were ones that I left out because I wanted to make use of those inside water elevators and things. Hmm, I guess I could do that back here. I was planning on going across like this, but I could probably do a few more out the back and then send the redstone signal across. In fact, forget sending redstone signals, why don't we send minecarts? I mean, I might as well move into this section of the inventory here, and it is so satisfying watching minecarts in water streams. <laughs> so that's going to drop down. I guess we could actually do a magma water stream here. Hmm, yeah, what do we do from there? I guess we could have magma and then a flowing water stream and then eventually it goes over a detector rail or something. I'm just in the editing bay right now. How many times have I gone hmm in this video? It might be a record for me. This works absolutely perfectly. This works absolutely perfectly. Minecart goes up and then drops down and ends up on this redstone block. So now we can start shifting things about. And that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm really pushing through here. So our minecart lands on our powered rail track, which is incredibly bright and psychedelic. It will activate both of these pistons, converting this path block into dirt and this farmland into dirt, which will allow redstone signal to pass through it. That's then going to travel down through here and into these pistons, which are going to be breaking our bamboo, which I can't remember if you placed that on sand. Yes, you can. So we're going to build up a bamboo stalk here. That will be broken by the piston. We're also going to make a mega sugar cane, I guess. We can do that. And 
I mean, what other things are there? I guess we could do scaffolding. Basically, I want to break all the things that will fall. If I... Oh, if I push that... That's not actually going to break, is it? I guess there's only one way to find out. Yes, it, it is going to break it. So that's that part done. Now we're getting honey blocks involved. We've got a few crafting benches too. Honestly, I kind of hadn't expected quite how mammoth this project was going to be. <laughs> you know how it goes. You come up with an idea and you're like, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, every item in Minecraft. How difficult could that be? And then you start building it. And, you know, you get eight maybe nine hours in and you start realizing maybe should have thought that one through a little bit better. Anyway, next up we need to do the silverfish blocks, which I think we can do in interesting ways. So as I'm sure most of you know, if you injure a silverfish or a silverfish takes damage, then local silverfish that are inside their blocks will pop out. So we can place those those silverfish blocks or infested blocks around here and then the silverfish can pop out and once again we can detect that making use of observers or potentially we could even use weighted pressure plates. Eh, I actually prefer the idea of an observer and that observer is then going to shoot an item into this furnace which will then smelt out the item and we can detect the item that's been smelted making use of hoppers. This is such a long chain. I actually wonder how long it will take for everything to happen. Like how long is this chain? in terms of time duration. Is this guy going to try and make his way to the water? Uh, I mean, maybe if we use a villager. You see what? I, I need to make use of all the pressure plates and all the different types of doors. Maybe if we use a pillager and a villager. Let's quickly try it out with a husk. So villager comes in. Almost... He kind of decided to run and then stopped running and decided he wanted to go back. Oh, that, that works. Oh, that totally works. <laughs> this is the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> if I punch this guy, look, he freaks out and decides he wants to get away from me. <laughs> and then he sees the husk and he, he's like, Whoa! he doesn't know what to do. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Oh no! Stop! <laughs> oh, I just set off the whole machine! And I have no backups! Ah, I have to reset everything! Thankfully, because the minecart is quite slow, I managed to get in there and stop too much from happening. But, yeah, I mean, you know, concrete and... I'd say probably about a quarter has gone through. Either way, I managed to fix all of that up, and now we have an output from this door line running into our shulker box circuit, so all of these dispensers are going to dispense out the shulker boxes, and then that will run into the next part of the circuitry, which I guess we have to do something with jukeboxes. That's one thing. I still need to do the mushroom blocks and all the walls. Oh my goodness, there's so many blocks in Minecraft. There's so many blocks. But I definitely can see the light at the end of the tunnel, so that's a positive. I've just knocked a bunch of them off right here, just getting them, just the non-functioning ones, just getting redstone on top of them. I feel a bit bad because a beacon's in there. But, I mean, there's not really much I can do redstone-wise with a beacon. So that's all that. And now I'm going to start work on the walls, which I think I'm just going to push them around. Now, this might seem a tiny bit cheaty, but there's a few redstone components that I literally can't do anything with like buttons and things, inputs, so I'm just kind of dotting them around throughout the redstone contraption. And finally, after many, many hours, this thing is now all completed. And I think we can all agree it looks rather spectacular, but I am genuinely curious to see if this actually works first time. Okay, I will eat my hat if this works first time, all right? So flicking the lever, that is going across generating stone. We have now detected the stone. That has sent a signal through to our sand pusher, which will then activate our TNT, which drops down. And hopefully this piece of TNT blows up the cobblestone, which it has. That cobblestone is now dropped into the water and it has gone up into the item elevator. Cool, okay, and that is going to make its way through into this system right here, which should push across the sponge, removing this piece of water, which will then go into the piston feed tape. It's taking its time, it's taking its time. There it is. Sponge is in, water's removed, piston feed tape is now spinning, and when that glass goes across this repeater, that is then going to send the signal through into our little leaf snake right here, which has now pushed the sand into the cobweb. Oh, okay, I have a little bit of time to breathe here. 
I am sweating so much. My palms are are basically pouring out water right now. Okay, this is this is serious. So when this piece of sand lands on the pressure plate, it will then activate this circuit tree. So we'll get gravel moving down, landing on pressure plates and things. But then most importantly is this diamond up at the top here is going to drop through the trap doors and it's going to end up on that pressure plate. Here it comes. There it is. It's landed on the pressure plate. It's sent the redstone signal up. It's gone through the anvil. All of our melons and pumpkins have just been broken. And... The concrete has been converted. Sorry, I forgot what happened next. And also all of our coral has died. And our minecart has been sent off through the water system. It's so difficult to keep up with what's happening. Concrete got converted. Corals got converted. And then also we sent off a minecart. That minecart is now here. So that is now going to travel through this part of the system. So we're going to get these paths and these farmland blocks being converted into dirt, which will make them solid blocks. And that's going to break all of these. And that sends the redstone signal through into the silverfish. They have just died. And that means that we now have an item in our furnace that is currently being smelted. When this is fully smelted up, our villager is going to be dispensed out. He's going to run away from the husk. Okay, okay, okay. Shulker boxes have happened. The note blocks have played. And everything has activated all at once. Walls got pushed and everything. Compost has moved the whole lot. And our doors have opened. We have opened up a two by two iron door set. There it is. All of that to open a pair of doors. And I couldn't be more out of breath. <laughs> oh, I started getting so stressed by the end of that. I am oh, sweating like an athlete. All right, well, that was fun. Hope you enjoyed. Um, don't know what to say now. That was all a bit dramatic, wasn't it? Thanks for watching, I guess. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. That was that was cool. That was cool. That felt like a proper old school Minecraft build. It's been ages since I built a Rube Goldberg machine. They're so much fun, aren't they? They are a lot of fun. I might do more of them, to be honest with you. That was a really satisfying experience. I might do one in real life. I don't know what I'm going to do.